When I was a kid, I played a whole lot of SimCity 2000. Like a lot a lot. The original SimCity was revolutionary, defining a genre where none had existed before. But SimCity 2000 added much more flexibility and depth, making it far more fun than its predecessor. Like all SimCity games, it doesn't really end. You can keep building forever. But once you hit 120,000 people in your city, you can build arcologies. These massive structures could hold tens of thousands of sims and included everything to meet their needs, like hospitals, fire, police, and education. With the density arcologies provided, you could create cities with incredible populations, millions of sims in one region. Because it was challenging to unlock arcologies because it took a while to get to 120,000 people in your city, they became sort of an iconic part of the game. I know I was absolutely fascinated by them as a kid. I mean, the idea of a city within a city, uh, a structure with thousands and thousands of people with everything they need in one building, it was amazing to me. Fifth grade me wondered if they were real or just science fiction. And would they be the future of cities? Maybe one could be under construction right now. Let's go on a journey to learn more about arcologies, one that will take us from Arizona to Saudi Arabia to Blade Runner and back to SimCity after the bike bell. Saudi Arabia has begun constructing The Line, a 170 kilometer linear city from the Red Sea toward the interior of the country. And it's probably the closest thing we have to a full scale archeology span project under construction. When it's finished, if it's finished, the line would be approximately 500 meters tall with multiple levels of metro lines, helping residents move along this incredibly narrow horizontal city. Designers claim that every resident will be able to meet their daily needs in a five minute walk and that the entire project will be powered by renewable energy. There have been plenty of videos done on the line and there are plenty of skeptics out there, me included. I'm not sure a city in the desert like this will ever truly be sustainable, nor am I sure it'll ever be totally completed, but they say it is under construction, so who knows? The Saudis bought golf and invested in a bunch of tech companies, so you probably don't wanna underestimate them. So what makes the line the closest thing we have to a SimCity arcology? Well, to understand that, we need to have a definition of arcology. And to develop a definition, we need to understand a history of the concept. Arcology was coined by architect Paolo Soleri. He began his career as a student of Frank Lloyd Wright, but eventually set out on his own, focused on the idea of how cities could live in harmony with nature. In fact, the term arcology comes from ecological architecture. Soleri began developing his ideas right at the dawn of the modern environmental movement. In fact, the first Earth Day was celebrated the same year Soleri published his treatise called Arcology, the City in the Image of Man. In the years that led up to 1970, Rachel Carson published her seminal book, Silent Spring, about pesticide use, the Cuyahoga River caught on fire in Cleveland due to pollution, and the Earthrise photo inspired everyone to think about the fragility of the planet we share. Campaigns began to save the whales, save the rainforest, stop DDT use, etc., etc. But Soleri turned his attention to cities, and when he looked at the suburbs, he saw things that people were only just starting to figure out. The American dream of a house in the suburbs and a couple of cars was incredibly wasteful. Sprawl ate up precious land and the distances between uses caused traffic and emissions. We were building the most inefficient cities possible. In his words, scattered life is by definition deprived or parasitic. To make matters worse, urbanization was happening at a breakneck pace worldwide. The global population was also growing rapidly. The planet went from 3 billion to 4 billion humans in just 14 years, 1960 to 1974. It would only take 13 more years to get to 5 billion. More people living in wasteful cities could spell ecological disaster. To Soleri, arcologies could help solve all of those problems and help us live in harmony with nature. The real problem he saw was horizontal cities. He said we should abandon them and go multidimensional instead. Now, this is somewhat obvious as it makes sense that you could house more people in a square kilometer filled with skyscrapers than a square kilometer filled with large lot single family homes. But Soleri wasn't just proposing traditional density. In his mind, the entire structure of a city should be multidimensional, including transit, waste, utilities, mail, freight, everything. It should be conceived as a complete whole, not as a city growing haphazardly, subdivision by subdivision. Finally, the arcology would be surrounded by open, natural landscapes. Food production would be handled within the arcology, leaving only nature outside. Now you might see those images and think that they look dystopian or too dense or too modern or whatever, but Soleri saw the future and he believed that this was ideally designed for human habitation. 
People like to be around other people. We're social species by nature, and having everyone close together, he thought, would make life better for everyone. Information would travel faster. Education would be easier to provide. Goods would be easier to provide. The systems that we need to survive would be more efficiently provided. So Larry's plans ran up against some challenges, notably reality. He was proposing a fundamentally different way of building cities, something so revolutionary it's hard to even picture us doing. This didn't stop Soleri from trying, and he has built an arcology in the Arizona desert called Arco Santi. It bears essentially no resemblance to his groundbreaking ideas, but sticks to his ideals about sustainable architecture and urban design. His organization's current manifesto doesn't discuss the importance of verticality, but instead pedestrian-scale design, urban agriculture, and basically 15-minute cities, or the idea that everyone should be able to fulfill all of their basic daily needs nearby. So an arcology has been built, Arco Santi. It is an arcology because the person who developed the term says it is one, but I would argue that it's not really. I mean, it's not even a megastructure by any sense of the definition. You could make the case that the city of Whittier, Alaska has a better case than Solari's own creation. No more than 100 people have ever lived in Arcosanti, while 272 people live in Whittier, and mostly under one roof, the Begich Towers condominium. It's 14 floors and contains condos, a bed and breakfast, general store, laundromat, post office, and a school with an indoor park connected via a tunnel. But there are plenty of other mixed-use buildings out there just like the Begich Towers, but the only difference here is that almost all residents of one town live in one building, sort of arcology style. Now, how did Solari's ideas for arcologies make their way into Blade Runner and SimCity? Well, Solari's own diagrams do look a bit like science fiction. Some of these look like giant spaceships or space stations, and in a way, they are. His vision for fully self-contained cities that made no impact on the surrounding environment are a perfect concept for space travel. If you want to hear more about arcologies in space, check out some of the great videos by Isaac Arthur. I'll leave a link in the description. It's no surprise then that science fiction writers picked up on the idea of arcologies and began incorporating them into their work. One was William Gibson's Neuromancer, published in 1984. Other writers had used the concept in the years prior, but he actually used the word arcology multiple times, and the popularity of the book helped increase the awareness of the concept, even if people didn't know its origins with Solari. Then, of course, came Blade Runner. This movie was actually released two years before Neuromancer and gave people a view of what a futuristic arcology could actually look like. Together with Neuromancer, Blade Runner helped kick off the cyberpunk aesthetic, and this concept of megastructure cities would become part of that world. How then did this arcology concept move from science fiction into Sim City? Well, the answer I have is rather unsatisfying. I'm honestly not sure. My best guess is that Will Wright, the game designer behind the SimCity games, was familiar with Solari, Neuromancer, Blade Runner, or other sci-fi examples of arcologies. Wright's games were all about systems, from traffic to power to pipes and land use demand. In his research, he certainly would have learned about self-contained megacities, and adding them toward the end of a player's SimCity journey was a nice reward for someone who had themselves mastered urban systems. When I was a kid dropping arcologies in my cities, I often wondered, is this the future of cities? Would I be living in an arcology someday? Well, 30 years later, and we know now that none of us are living in true arcologies. Why? Well, remember that population growth chart from before? We're no longer on the part of the curve where the Earth is adding a billion people every 14 years. The UN predicts that by 2100, the curve will start bending the other way and we'll reach a peak population at around 10.4 billion people. That's still over 2 billion more people than exist today, but it's not the kind of population number that's going to make arcology living desirable or necessary. Solari was right to say that cities should be denser and take advantage of efficiencies associated with location and access, but megastructures are probably a bridge too far. That's partly why I'm skeptical of the line. It actually resembles an arcology in many ways. It truly looks like a megastructure, a continuous purpose-built city with all systems designed to create efficiencies. Instead of going vertical, like Soleri argued, they decided to go in a straight line. I guess it simplifies some systems, but I'd imagine a circle or sphere would be more efficient, as you could theoretically have more destinations closer to you, especially if you were at the center of the sphere. The line is designed to house 9 million people, and housing them at a density of 260,000 people per square kilometer is certainly more land efficient than suburban sprawl. But the designers have to make life in the line significantly better than living in another normal city. It's not like our planet is reliant on arcologies, and everyone has to live in one, for the population reasons I just mentioned. If completed, the line could be cool in a cyberpunk futuristic way, and that might attract some people. It's the closest thing we have to a Blade Runner now that Kowloon Walled City is gone. 
but it just doesn't seem necessary. And you're still stuck in the middle of the desert. I guess for the time being, city planners will have to stick to making cities better the old fashioned way and leave our colleges to the science fiction writers and SimCity players. If you think developing futuristic mega cities is too out there, you'll probably love my next video on regular old real estate development. The video takes you through an example multifamily housing project to see just how real estate developers put together a deal and navigate the many obstacles they face. The cool thing is that video is live on Nebula right now. There's no waiting. You can just go over there and check it out. That's because we've developed a thing called Nebula First, which means that we post videos earlier on Nebula than you'd find them on YouTube. And the cool thing is that I post videos so early that anytime you see a video of mine on YouTube, it means my next video is already live on Nebula. It's like living in the future. Other creators are doing the same thing, meaning that you can get videos from Johnny Harris, Legal Eagle, Jetlag, and more earlier than you would find them on YouTube. For those that don't know, Nebula is a creator-owned streaming service that I'm extremely proud to be a part of. It's one of the best ways of supporting this channel as I'm one of the co-owners of the service. And if you need another reason to sign up for Nebula beyond supporting this channel and getting content early, well, I have one. I've posted a ton of bonus content on Nebula that's exclusive and you can't get anywhere else. That includes my Great City series. I profiled six cities at critical points in their history. This includes Paris during Houseman's renovation, the development of the Shanghai metro system, the world's largest, and how Venice got its canals. Nebula gave me a bigger budget to produce them, so they're really quite good if I do say so. I also have a Nebula original called Planning Ancient Rome that I absolutely love, as well as some shorter bonus videos that you can check out. Other creators are posting amazing original exclusive content to Nebula as well. One of my favorites is the Jetlag series which is sort of like a travel game show involving a lot of trains and funny challenges. If you like my channel, I can pretty much guarantee you'll be addicted to that series. Now, Nebula is normally priced at a completely reasonable $50 per year, but if you use my code CityBeautiful when you sign up, you get $20 off that annual plan. That brings it down to $250 per month, which is really the best deal in streaming for what you get. So go click on the link on screen or in the description and get $20 off an annual subscription to Nebula. And go watch my next video. It's there right now. Thanks.